In this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to set up uh, the WhatsApp API so that you can use it with N8N, Make.com, or indeed um, any other uh, application in which you need to call WhatsApp programmatically. Now, the Meta Business Suite setup for the WhatsApp API is notoriously difficult, and most tutorials only show you the instructions up to um, up to using a trial number, and getting that into production and using an actual number is a whole nother ball game. So uh, the service that we're going to use is something called WA API, which is uh, a really cost effective and a really easy to use uh, WhatsApp API. Um, it's like less than ten dollars a month for one account um, for the basic plan, and if you need multiple accounts to run on it, then you know you can scale up, and and the price actually gets more economical as you as you scale up. Let's go ahead and dive into the documentation just to get an idea of the kind of features that it has. Um, so you do have webhooks uh, in which um, you know you can you can trigger your workflow once you receive a message, and they also have a lot of other events here that you can trigger uh, your workflows with. So that's um, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be using the message event which is someone has sent you a message via WhatsApp because that's typically what you're going to use to start your workflow. And if you go down to the API, you'll see that there are a lot of different API calls available. Mostly what we're going to be using is message and you'll see that we have a lot of different uh, API calls for messaging with the simplest being send a text message. You can also send media, V cards, locations, etc. So there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do all the way to pinning, unpinning messages. Um, you can even access groups and uh, stories as well. So you can see that the uh, API is fairly comprehensive and it's pretty easy to use also. So let's go ahead and see how to set this up. Um, so if you go to the homepage, you can uh, create an account. You can start a free trial. The free trial will let you set up your webhooks, but it doesn't let you make API calls. You will need to sign up uh, for the paid plan uh, to get this to, um, in order to make API calls. But again, it's fairly economical, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so once you go ahead and sign in, I'm going to go into my dashboard. So this is what the dashboard looks like. You will have to buy a subscription from here. And once everything is set up, you want to go under your instances, this uh, tab here. Once you're in here, there, there will be a button to create an instance. Since I'm on the basic plan, I only have one instance allowed, so that button's not showing up. Once you go ahead and create the instance, it will show you a QR code, which you can go to your WhatsApp and add a new device, scan the QR code, and that will connect your WhatsApp account to uh, WAPI. Now, once that's connected, you need to hang on to this instance number because you're going to need this when you make the API calls. So let's go ahead and set up the webhooks first because presumably we want to receive a message first before before sending it. So I'm going, going to go ahead and click here and we can open up this instance. And you'll see this information here. You'll see, uh, you know, your name, your phone number, etc. And down here, you'll have the webhook URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to erase this and let's go ahead and set up a new, a new webhook. So let's go ahead and just hit save. So we have removed the webhook here. You can ignore the failures here because that's when my workflow where the work that's because the workflow where the webhook was going was turned off temporarily and I must have gotten quite a few messages in that time. So that's why uh, there are a lot of webhook failures as well. Now um, let's go dive into N8N and the first step that we want to add to trigger this workflow is a webhook. Let's go ahead and search for webhook, set that up and you need to make sure it's a post webhook because that's the kind of webhook that um, that WAPI will send. And this is the test URL. So you'll see that it says webhook dash test, which is good for testing. Once we are in production, you'll you can go ahead and click the production URL and you'll see that the dash test is gone. But for testing, this is fine. Let's go ahead and just click this to copy that and come back to WAPI. And we have to paste this here. Uh, then we have to choose the different webhook events that we want uh, the webhook to trigger with. So for now, let's go ahead and just choose message, which means you have received a message. And let's go also, um, let's also go ahead and choose message underscore create. Message create will trigger when you send a message or when you receive a message. And you need to enable this if you want to send messages to yourself. Otherwise, it's only going to trigger if you receive an external message. 
and and that's not good for testing because you'll either need a second phone with you or uh, you'll need to wait for somebody to actually message you in order for the workflow uh, to trigger from the webhook. So now that these two things are done, like we can go ahead and hit save. There's a couple of more steps that we have to do. So if you scroll up and click on your name and you want to go down to webhook settings. Now, WAPI has one extra layer of authentication um, that you have to throw in with the webhook. Otherwise, the webhook is not going to trigger. And that's going to be this webhook secret. Now, this is exposed for now, just for the purpose of this tutorial. And I'm just going to go ahead and regenerate the secret once the tutorial is done. So I'm just, let's go ahead and copy this and go back into N8N. And we also we want to add that to the path of this webhook. So you'll see the path up here matches the path down here. So we can click here, splash, and then we can paste the webhook secret. So the actual webhook URL is going to be this unique path slash the webhook secret um, that you govern the API. And uh, we have to go back into WAPI and we have to add this into your webhook as well. So once you, you copy that again, go back to your instances and just add a slash and add the add the key uh, into this as well. Now, if it, we can go ahead and hit save. Once we've saved it, now we can try and test this. So let's go ahead and listen for a test event. So I've opened up WhatsApp. I've opened a chat with myself. And let's go ahead and just type in hello. And hopefully we'll see that the webhook triggers. And we do see that indeed the webhook has triggered. And we have all of this data uh, to work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and pin this data. Uh, just to hang on to that for uh, for our testing. And we have all of this information. We have the uh, the host, the user agent. If you go down to the body, this is the um, this is the type of webhook that we've received. So the event is message create because it is a message that I sent, right? Um, if you send a message to yourself, it doesn't pick it up as something you've received, which is why you need to enable create as well. Remote is the number that you got it from. And the body of the message is hello. Uh, there's a lot of other information which we don't really need to worry about right now. So we do know that the webhook is indeed working. So let's go back out. I'm just going to hook this up to a simple AI agent and we'll connect that to um, to OpenAI. And we'll have that output to an API call that sends a message. So I'm just going to go ahead and click AI agent. And instead of connected tra chat trigger node, we need to define below. And the uh, prompt is going to be the text from here. So that's going to be the body of the earlier message, right? Um, and that's that's basically it. We can go ahead and click out of that. We just need to add a chat model. I'm going to op add OpenAI because my credentials are saved. If you don't have credentials, you'll need to um, add your credentials here uh, by grabbing your API key from uh, platform.openai.com. Or you can use any other model that also works. 4 mini is fine. Let's go ahead and hit save just uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, so now that this is set up, so we need to send messages back to the user. Uh, so let's go ahead and add an API call, right? So that's going to be an HTTP request. And this time you want to make a post request. And if we dive back into the documentation, we can go ahead and see uh, the uh, what, what exactly uh, we need. So let's go back here. And we'll see to, uh, in order to send a text message to a chat, we need the instance ID. We need uh, the chat ID, which was, uh, if you go back, if we go back to the data that we've pinned here, the chat ID is the uh, remote, right? That's the format that it's looking for. This one here. Uh, we also require a uh, the actual body of the message. And we also need the authorization headers. So a neat way to set this up is to just um, fill in all of the details, all of the details here, and that will actually create that entire request up here, uh, which we can then copy paste into N8N. So the first thing we need is the instance ID. So we can go back to WAPI. And we'll see that the instance ID is this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy. Let's go back to the documentation. Paste that here. I will have to delete this instance and set it, set up something new again because all of these things are getting exposed, but that's okay for now. Go back to WhatsApp setup, uh, go back to N8N, and we'll get the um, the chat ID from here, which is myself for now. So I'm just going to copy that. 
Uh, let's go ahead and paste that in here. And the message string can be hello there. The last step that we need to add is the token. And to get that, I'm going to go back to WAPI, uh, go to API tokens. And I have my API token over here. Um, I can go ahead and generate a new one because uh, this one, it's, it's not going to let me access that token again. Uh, let's go ahead and just type YouTube tutorial. And we, we can leave all of these permissions on. Create. We have this. Uh, we have this token. It's going to copy it, and obviously, I'm going to delete it once the once the tutorial is done. Go back into double. Sorry, go back into here, and we can paste that token up here. So we have the entire request uh, over here. Everything that we need to add to our uh, HTTP request in AnyTent. So we can see that it's a post request, and this is the URL that we have to send it to. So let's go ahead and grab that URL first copy go back here and the http request is a post request and paste the url we can leave authentication at none because we are just sending the headers manually but you can also uh, save the authentication um into your init and instance if you're going to use it um, across multiple workflows so the first authorize the the first header is going to be authorization and we can confirm that by going out, uh, going back into the documentation, and you will see that it is indeed authorization. And the key is bearer and your API key. Let's go ahead and grab that. Make sure not to grab the final quotation mark. Copy, paste that in here. Um, we need to add another header. This time it's going to be accept, copy, paste, application JSON. Copy that, paste it in here. We also need to add uh, one more parameter, which is content type. That's also going to be application JSON. Copy that, paste that in here. And we do need to send a body as well. So the body content is going to be, we can leave that as raw. The content type is application JSON. Paste that in here. And the body, instead of fixed, you want to go ahead and click on expression. And we can go back to the API call and grab everything after data, but not the quotation mark, right? So we only need to send two parameters. We need to send the chat ID and we also we need to send the message. So copy, go back in here, paste that. And for now, I'm just hard coding uh, the message, the recipient and uh, the message itself. But uh, once we test all the steps again, um, we will be able to see the input data here that we can drag into here and replace that dynamically. So if you go ahead and hit test, hopefully it'll send the message. And you'll see that it, uh, the status is a success. It did send a message and the message should be hello there. And if I open up my WhatsApp, we'll see that hello there, the a hello there message has indeed been received. Perfect. So everything is set up. We are able to receive messages. We're able to send messages. Now, the only thing that we have to do is we need to hook up uh, the earlier event, the input from here into here. So the chat ID, we can erase and scroll down and find the chat ID here, which is the remote, right? Or you can even grab the from, but let's just stick to remote for now. And we're going to grab that, add it here. And uh, instead of hello there, the message can be the reply from the, the output from the AI agent. So the way the workflow is currently set up, um, anytime you get a message from an external number, uh, that message will go into the AI agent. The AI, the AI agent will then process that and it will reply back to, uh, back to that number, whoever sent that message. So the way things are set up right now, anybody who sends me a message um, will get a reply from the AI agent. Um, in case you don't want that to happen and you're setting up a personal chatbot where you just want to message your own number and get a reply from the AI, there is an extra step that you'll have to take. Uh, and that's because any message that you're sending is also going out from yourself, which will get picked up by the webhook again and the whole agent is going to get thrown into a loop. So what we want to do is we can go back into the AI agent and we can add a system message. 
and let's see if you are a helpful assistant important start each message with bot so you'll know that that's the ai actually replying right um and then we can go back here and we can just add a filter in between so um the first filter is going to be that we only want uh, we only want this to trigger if the message is coming from uh you know my own number if that's the case right so i'm going to go ahead and add if remote is equal to my number right and again you can ignore this if you're expecting to receive messages from external numbers but since i'm building a chatbot to you know um like since i'm building a personal assistant i'm going to leave this in we can go ahead and add that is equal to so let's go ahead and test this step and see to make sure whether it's keeping it or not so this message has indeed been kept we also want to add another condition and that condition is going to be that the body string does not contain and bot so um it's going to ignore the trigger if the message is coming from the ai itself and it will only trigger if the message is indeed from me you can go ahead and click back out save or let's go ahead and test the workflow i'm going to hit test and uh oops i forgot to unpin the data which is why um it just used the pin data but if we go open whatsapp we'll see that we should be receiving a reply from the ai agent this time bot hello how can i assist you today perfect so let's go ahead and unpin the data from here uh and and, and test it once oops yeah. unpin save test and i'm going to send myself a message what can you tell me about n8n and that should trigger the workflow it's executing and uh, once it's done thinking it will uh it'll send me a message so i have not received a message let's go ahead and go back in here and see okay so the message was the, was that the chat id format was not correct and this is kind of a this is a bug that happens sometimes there's an issue in the way the variable is being pulled from here so let's go ahead and just leave this as json and just add this manually right so if we go back into um into the api we'll see that there has to be a chat id let's go ahead and add that oops chat id and we can pull that from here we also need to add a message field let's grab that message and that is going to be the output from the ai agent and we can just test this to make sure it works test and we'll see that it did indeed work and if you go into whatsapp we'll see that i have indeed received this message here so this is a quick and easy way to set up uh whatsapp with your uh with your n8n workflows with your make.com workflows with indeed with any workflows or apps that you're using um i've tried a lot of different uh you know third party api providers for whatsapp and i found that wa api is one of the easiest to use and one of the easiest to set up so i hope you found this useful and if you did i'd really appreciate it if if you could like the video and subscribe for more ai and automation content